Library. Uh, City Hall. Uh, first, third, second, third bank. Never know when I might need that. Hello, friends. Welcome back to the show. So glad to see you once again. And if you're new here, well, you've landed on the right place because this is the show where we look at each and every episode of the new adventures of Batman, as well as other DC animated shows, and review them and look at them from the perspective of now versus what it was like when we were a kid. And so if this sounds like something you might be interested in, be sure to hit subscribe down below so that you don't miss any of the episodes. Because today we're talking about Sins of the Father, which originally aired on September 20th, 1997. Where's your old man? Who wants to know? So we just kind of jumped into the world of Batman in the last episode, Holiday Nights. If you haven't seen that, you could check that one out. And so this episode kind of takes us back in time a little bit and shows us how Tim Drake became Robin. But we'll talk all about that right after our 60 second rundown of the episode. Here we go. A young scrappy Tim Drake is being pursued by an old cop over some donuts. He finally makes it home to find some thugs looking for his father. And so they capture Tim and they take them to their boss, which is Two-Face. Two-Face finds a key and takes that. Batman comes in to save Tim Drake and in the process gets blown up and Tim Drake has to save him. They go back to the Batcave and Tim Drake learns his secret identity. Uh, and uh, as he wanders through the mansion because Alfred left the door open and then Barbara Gordon, Batgirl and Batman go after Two-Face and Tim Drake dons the Robin costume and goes to help them. And so Batman decides to train Tim Drake to be Robin. And in the process, Dick Grayson shows up. Ooh, that was easy. Weird. So this episode, for all intents and purposes, is an origin episode. I kind of wish they would have let this one go. I'm glad they didn't start with this one, because I like that the previous episode, Holiday Nights, they just jumped into it and showed, oh, here's Tim Drake. I guess, again, it makes sense because we've been watching all these episodes and we've seen Dick Grayson as Robin, and now we have a new Robin. What happened? And so this kind of serves that purpose to, to explain that story, what's going on. But it's not really a flashback, a, a true flashback. I mean, obviously it takes place before holiday nights, but, but in some ways it's just, here's the story. Going somewhere, kid. And so I'm a little forgiving of that for it being a origin story because one, they do kind of change the story of Tim Drake and they add elements of Jason Todd into his story. So in that, it kind of helps get your mind wrapped around what we're doing in the series. But honestly, my biggest uh, challenge with this episode was that everybody's a little bit careless for it to serve the story. So once Batman enters the scene, so we start off with Tim Drake getting chased down and getting into trouble with, with Two-Face and all that, and he, he lands in this place. And then Batman comes in to save him, and Batman is always can hold his own, and he can do what he needs to do, unless he needs to be rescued by a kid, in which case he carelessly gets blown up here so that Tim Drake has to has to rescue him and takes him back to the Batcave. Behind you! And in a similar fashion, Alfred's a little careless and leaves the door to Wayne Manor open. And then Tim Drake gets up there and, and discovers that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Oh my. And while all this is going on, nobody seems to be too concerned that this little kid just figured out Batman's identity and there's there's criminals and masterminds and Hugo Strange and these powerful criminals trying to figure this out and in a matter of a few minutes Tim Drake figures out that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Bruce Wayne, huh? Sorry you saw that. And then also Batman is truly one of the greatest detectives in the world. However, I can't imagine how he's able to look at the imprint of a key on a piece of paper and know what building it goes to. Even that's a bit of a stretch for Batman. There's an impression. I mean, it's one thing to look at a key and go, oh, I know where that goes. It's another thing to see the imprint that it leaves on a piece of paper, on a note, and go, oh, I know where that's at. You know, why couldn't he, like, 
traced it and put it into the database and figured it out that way and it ran a comparison of the different keys something else but he just looks at it and goes yep i know where it's at again it just felt a little sloppy or a little hurried up to get to the next point do you recognize it Gotham Airport. Although I do like, again, as Batman and Bruce Wayne have kind of evolved in this new series, the new adventures of Batman, I do like this kind of gruffer, older aged Batman. And that's depicted really well when Tim Drake comes down and asks, and they're talking about his father, and Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, is trying to kind of beat around the bush of what happened to his father, and Batman cuts right to the chase. My old man, he's gone for good. This one of John Doe means, right? Well, we can't be absolutely... Yes. So I like that. I mean, Batman's always had a soft spot for kids, but he's also very straightforward with them and doesn't sugarcoat anything. He was never going to come back for me anyway. He was too scared. Of what? What did he take from Two-Face? I do enjoy in this episode, and I don't know if it was deliberate or not, but Dick Grayson and Tim Drake, uh, it appears to have the same sort of setup or same... Um, situation happened to them in their formative years as Robin. In this episode, we see Batgirl and Batman running off to go stop Two-Face and Tim Drake going, I want to go. No, it's too dangerous. But I got a stake in this. I said no. He dons the Robin costume and shows up anyway. It used to make Master Dick furious. Most unfortunate. But in Robin's Reckoning, a similar thing happens where Batman says, no, I'm going to do this alone. You got to stay here. And Robin doesn't like that. And he goes off anyway. And in both cases, Robin uh, ends up helping save the day that if he would have listened to Batman, then Batman would be in big trouble. Hope I haven't missed all the fun. Also, I don't again, I don't know if it was deliberate and it was a, or if it was a little nod in the comics. But the fact that there was a Robin costume hanging up in the Batcave in the comics, that's Jason Todd's costume. And in this one, they kind of reference it like it's Dick Grayson, although Dick Grayson isn't dead or they're not memorializing his costume in this sense. But to me, that felt like a little nod to Jason Todd. Jeez, I don't believe it. It's the real Robin suit, isn't it? And even in some of the history, they kind of blend some elements of Jason Todd into Tim Drake in this that in the comics, if I remember correctly, in the comics, Tim Drake's parents were still alive, or at least his father was still alive. I think he later died. But initially, when when Tim Drake was first becoming Robin, his parents were still around. And, and in fact, they were like in the same social class as Bruce Wayne. Again, if I remember this correctly, if I'm wrong, please let me know in the comment section. But I like that dynamic where Robin had to, Tim Drake had to sneak into his house and not get detected as he was moonlighting as Robin with Batman. Whereas Jason Todd was also orphaned and a little bit of a criminal himself running around the streets of, of Gotham. And so that was one of the challenges where he, he had that kind of rougher side to him that Batman was trying to shape and mold and, and turn him towards good. So they introduced some of those elements in there with this version of Tim Drake. So what? I know how to keep a secret. You can trust me. Honest. And I, and I think that the reason that they wanted, they eliminated Tim Drake's parents is because in this series, they seem to really want to focus on making this Batman family. Um, we haven't even been talking much about the fact that Barbara Gordon is still Commissioner Gordon's daughter, and obviously Commissioner Gordon's still around, but she's with Batman more and in this this trio more and so it feels like to me like they're really playing up that that uh, family element can we go home now I love the scene in this where they're fighting in the movie theater and again even though the style of the animation has changed a bit with this new series, they still have these great noir elements, like the projections of their shadows on the screen in the movie theater when they're fighting. And I also have to say that for Robin being new to this crime fighting business, his little quips in this are, are right on point. It's your kind of show, puke face. A double feature. But up to this point, we've referenced Dick Grayson, but we haven't established what's going on with him or where he's at or why he's not part of the team anymore. So to see him appear at the end 
was a great little tie-in to the old series, but again, establishing that we are now further along in the continuity. Dick, my word. Hey, no one can be a boy wonder forever. So when it comes time to rank this episode, it's a solid episode, and really we're only comparing it to one other episode. But for me, it falls at the number two spot so far, just below Holiday Nights, just because that episode at least has some more variety. And at the heart of this episode, it's still just an origin story of Robin. Kill him. So let me know, who is your favorite Robin uh, in all the story. I think I always think of Dick Grayson as Robin, but truly when I started reading comics in the early mid nineties, Tim Drake was Robin. So a lot of the, my comic book history with Batman was Tim Drake. And, and it was only going back and reading older issues that I started reading more about Dick Grayson, but obviously Dick Grayson was the Robin in the animated show and on the old 60s Batman show. I think I have a special place for the original Robin, Dick Grayson, but I also really do enjoy the Tim Drake Robin because he is a different type of character. Let me know in the comment section below who your favorite Robin is. If you enjoyed this episode, please click the like button. If you want to see more episodes like this, just hit subscribe because we have new episodes coming out every Tuesday and Thursday as we review each and every episode of the new Batman adventures. And this Thursday, we have the episode Cold Comfort. Gee, I wonder who's in that one. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Andy Canode, and I'll see you soon.